In process three, we begin with black paper and paint on it with iridescent ink aid, then tape around the edges for ease of printing. The curled paper is taped down to the carrier sheet. The image Zakum at night is printed and the tape is carefully removed. The carrier sheet is once again used as a template and as a method to allow for full bleed printing over deckled edges without messing up your printer. The print setup and dialog box is explained with screenshots. In this demonstration, I'm going to show how to tone and uh, colored papers and use the ink aids, all the various different um, pearlescent ink aids in this case, I'm just using the different pearlescents, to tone colored papers working from dark to light and also working with light colored papers. There's a couple of techniques that get covered with this that I really, really love the effects of. In this instance, I have a, um, a print that I've printed onto a very lightweight uh, paper that I just toned with ink aid. And what I did with the ink aid, the gold ink aid in this case, was I just painted the piece down. I wet the piece slightly to get it to sort of lay down on top of the, the carrier sheet. And then I put ink aid over it. And that was enough, enough of an adhesive to hold it in place while I could run this whole thing through the printer. And this is a very thin sheer paper and this will be wonderful to collage with at this point. But it was too thin to just drop it into the printer and it also, the ink would have just soaked into the paper and wouldn't have, ha wouldn't have looked so beautiful. And with the gold in it, it popped the image just slightly. So I like that effect and, and not, it, you won't be able to see this subtleties of this on the camera, uh, but you can see in the light when you walk around, this has an iridescence to it and it works beautifully. I love this. Another piece that I did was, and this is just a quick piece, on black paper. This is really coal black paper and the um, Arches makes a beautiful dense colored black paper that I love working on. This is just simply two types of ink aid. I put pearl and I put silver down on this. Very random strokes. Really no intention of knowing what I was going to print on top of the image. I was just laying down, playing with the color and the black paper. I, I love to do that just to experiment with things. And what a gorgeous print this is. It's really, really beautiful. The, the other ways of maybe working with the image. Here I have a piece of paper that is craft paper colored or um, brown paper bag. It is not brown paper bag, it's a piece of um, acid free, but it's that craft paper color that I love, that sort of beigey warm brown tone. I love that color. I'm just going to paint onto this black square pearl and silver ink aid. So I have the pearl and the silver in these little pots. And you'll just see me, it's very simple. Just open them up. And I use all sorts of brushes. I use whatever brushes I have. I have a variety here of things that I want to practice with. On um, this one. And I have no real intent with the plan for what the image is that I'm going to put here. If I did, I would maybe work the colors in a certain way. You can see that every brush stroke, and this is a very broad brush, you see every brush stroke in this. It does curl the paper, you end up having to iron it, and I will show you how I tape these down in the next step to this, once this dries. So, I'm just going to do a wash of very random strokes. I think I'll come in here with a gold on top. That was the pearl on the bottom and this is the silver on the top. And they're very similar, just a slight difference. And you will see this, it's subtle. So you really don't see it in the surface when it's dry.
There you have it. We let that dry. When it's dry, I iron it and I tape it down to a carrier. I have my black paper that is um, coated with the ink aid. The silver and the pearl ink aid is in this sur on the surface. And as you can see, it has a fair bit of curl. And this curl is a problem for the printer because when you load this in the printer, all of this stuff is going to catch and it's, you're just never going to get it to read for another thing. So ultimately what you want to do is again put this onto a carrier sheet and I seem to work with a standard two inches on the left side and two inches on the top. And part of the reason I do that is because these Epson printers really like to uh, read that leading edge and it's really nice if it's just there all the time also it's a standard that I work with it's what I'm comfortable you could be six inches you could be two inches five inches whatever it is that you want to work with for me it works great it allows me to set up a template and place things over and over again on the carrier sheets as I said and the other reason is I'm trying to get to the point where I can print over the edges of irregular materials. These are not standard issue full bleed uh, substrates. We're making our own and we all have different colors here too. So to give the printer the best chance of printing where I want it, I use the, the carrier sheet. But to get this onto the carrier sheet is a bit of a challenge. This is where um, this technique works very well. What I'm going to show you is taping around the edges. This could be used for handmade papers that have a deckled edge or uh, anything you want to print full bleed that is irregularly shaped. I like this method for also handling things that are irregular in the fact that they're curled. You begin by I've already ironed this flat and you can see how flat it is. It's not, but it's smoother than it was. What I want to do now is tape it down. And to begin with, I use uh, masking tape, all sorts of masking tapes, shapes and sizes. I find masking tape is uh, very affordable and the, the challenge with it is um, is it is kind of sticky and on papers it can tend to remove the material, the edges, the decals. It can cause problems. So to eliminate the amount of tack this tape has, I simply put it down onto either my shirt or onto a wool blanket. I'm finding that this piece of antique old wool army blanket, see, this moth-eaten piece of wool, old skirt, old pant, whatever, um, I just have this cut off a blanket and I keep it around my studio and I use it to detack all the tapes that I put down. It's very handy to have this. So for this process, as I said, we're going to begin from the back and work towards the front. And I'll explain it. So in, in the very beginning stage, I pull tape off and I just actually stick it down to my blanket before I continue. You can use the uh, white tape, drafting tape. That, I have a hard time finding it. I find it's very expensive, it's very heavy, and this seems to work pretty well. I've learned to work with it very well, and I can get this tape everywhere, and that's why I use it. I live about 50 miles from the nearest really good art supply store, so I tend to use as many materials like this that are inexpensive and readily accessible. Um, it kills me to pay shipping and handling for things like this. So maybe it's a make-do kind of situation. Alright, so now I have tape just set up. It's, it's really easy to work with this and now I also know that it's picked up a fair bit of lint and it's now less tacky and this is great. It, you can really see the fuzz on here. So initially I just begin by putting this down on the back side of my pieces. It won't even stick to the table too much. You just want to get it down enough to hold it. 
Now what I'm going to do is pull this over, pull this to the surface, and tape it down to the carrier sheet. Before I do that, though, I want to trim up the edges a little bit on it. So I'll use my cutting mat to do that. I want to square up these edges, get rid of some of this excess. Don't need it all. Fact. I've used a wide tape. You don't have to use wide tape, but I'll show you why I use it. I'm going to reuse these pieces I cut off. Don't crumple those up. I'm going to use them. Don't need that. And I don't need that. If the paper wasn't curling, you could just fold over these edges and run it through the printer that way. Um, it is easier, though, if you put it to a substrate uh, carrier sheet. It just solves a lot of problems all at once. Okay, so I'm just going to trim this one down as well. Here's the carrier sheet. And this is just my standard carrier sheet. I've marked it. The marks are a little bit harder to see at this point in time. So I don't worry about that too much. I just do the best I can getting it aligned. I will measure it before I run it through the printer. So you see how much curl I'm dealing with. Take the tape that you just cut off and just go now down. You're going right to the edge and you're putting that piece that you just cut off that has a lot of the fuzz removed. I mean a lot of the tack removed and has a little bit of fuzz with it. Just putting this back down and here it is important to try to get things a little more flat and I'm easing this down pulling slightly on everything I'm working on to just kind of encourage this paper to go flat. It still has a little bit of wrinkle in it, too much to go through the printer. This is still too high, so I have to force this down and now across the leading edge I have some irregularities and what you don't want to do is put something in the printer that's six colors at the top. The printer doesn't know what to do. The, the, um, the electronic eye comes across this and reads this and it doesn't know this is one color, this is another color, there's a gap here and then there's down here is this color. So the way you eliminate that is just to take a large piece of tape and just go over the whole bit so that the whole leading edge, the whole two inch, and this is why I am using the larger roll, you've just, you're just going to eliminate that any problem, any confusion the printer might have by covering up that leading edge. And there you have it. This will go through the printer. It'll print beautifully. I just want to load this in the printer. In the page setup dialog, you will need to make a custom page size that is equal to your carrier sheet. To do this, you'll need to find the dialog box for managing custom sizes. In that dialog, you choose a new paper size by pressing the plus sign and naming it your page size. I've named my page size 16 inches wide by 20 inches high. I've defined that width and height in the page size boxes. Next, I've changed all the margins to zero. The boxes that define top, left, right, and bottom should all read zero. Click OK and go back into the Page Setup dialog. Be sure your custom size is now reading 16 wide by 20 high. Click OK and you will now need to get into the Print dialog box. In the Print dialog, once again, you'll need to choose the printer Stylus Pro 7800. Uncheck the center image box 
and type in the top box two inches and two inches from the left. Remember, I have placed my black paper on the carrier sheet at two inches from the top and two inches from the left. Next, you'll need to scale your print up slightly to overprint your edge. Notice I've set my print size to 102%. My print will now begin printing at two inches from the top and two inches from the side and will overprint my edges by 0.24 inches. This may seem like a lot of expansion of your image, but it gives you some play if your alignment is not precise and your custom substrate has irregular edges such as decals. Next, you want to check your color handling. My chosen default print settings are to let the printer manage the colors with the rendering intent set to perceptual. Now click print and you are in the next dialog box. Make sure your printer is chosen. My preset was saved and it is set up this way. Page setup equals sheet. Media type equals enhanced matte paper. Color equals color. Mode equals advanced settings. Print quality is super fine, 1440 with the finest detail checked and high speed unchecked. Press print. The variables with the custom made meteor are far too great to allow for precision color management by me. I'd rather rely on the serendipity of art making and leave the science of color management to scientists. If I'm not completely satisfied with one of my prints due to a color issue, I view it as an opportunity to make changes, and that often takes the print to a very different level. It's all finished, yay! And it printed so nicely, and I told the printer to print the image at 102%, and you can see that it's overprinted these edges on the tape. So I need to handle it just a little bit carefully when I go to remove the tape, because I want to not get that ink on the so first I'm going to just run my paper towel along the edge just to kill that ink so when I handle it, it's dry enough to put my hand on, but I don't want to move it around too much. That's just going to help. Now I'm turning it over. I want to work from the back side to remove the tape. I always want to work from the back side to remove the tape. It's just easier that way. See how quickly that comes off that? So I'm now off the carrier sheet. And the next step is to begin to peel this away. I like to begin in the middle. It's so easy. If you do this with deckled paper, you have to be careful um, about pulling the fibers away. So you just constantly are working from the back towards the front. So I'm literally just pulling from the back side of the tape, the back of the piece of paper, the back of the artwork to the front. And I'm always really careful around my corners. And guess what? It's all finished. Oh, this is the right side. This is side up. That's the Zakem Bridge in Boston at night.